All right, guys, and as promised, I am back with part two with the 10 tips, except this time, I think I was able to actually get a couple more. And so with that being said, hi. Welcome back to another Revive Witch video. My name is Lace, and today we're gonna be going through another 10 tips or so. I think I've actually got 12 for you guys. 10 tips, 12 tips, whatever. Uh, all I can say is that I am giving you guys the tip. All right, and so without further ado, let's jump into tip one because I can't be stuffed like screwing around. Let's go into dream world. And so the first tip is actually based on one of the last tips from the last video. And so the tip that I'm referring to is that once you have successfully finished one of these stages, when you use the auto button, your team cannot die. And so the tip is pretty simple. If your team can't die, then just set all of your DPS skills on. And so hopefully that should reduce the amount of time it takes for you to run all of the stages. Very, very simple tip one and so let's just move right on to tip number two and so the next few tips are actually they're they're quite extensive and they all have to do with pvp and so really tip number two is that you should have rushed pvp on day one i should have rushed for pvp on day one and so the reason that we should have rushed pvp on day one is because if you are able to win against the master or as a matter of fact any of them here what you receive upon winning is a massive amount of exp for your account level and so the reason that is so important is because because you want to be able to push to uh, account level 20 so that you can have access to the mana uh, dreamland number six. This guy over here, as you can see, unlocks a magic 20. And like I've said in a previous video, these ones, they actually scale really, really harshly. And what I mean by that is that the dream of Adin six, its value in terms of the amount of mana you get per stamina spent is pretty insane compared to the rest. However, we are here now. There is not too much we can do. And so guys, just remember, you got to do your PVP. But for this tip itself, you also need to remember that if you do lose, you don't get any EXP. And so whilst it is free EXP, it will, it may not be as well if you're too cocky. All right, and so let's move on to tip number three, which is these guys over here. This is your uh, your keys for the Chrono Space Breach. Essentially, you have five attacks a day, but you are able to actually refresh these keys uh, up to three times. So you could have potentially up to eight attacks a day. And it is pretty much always worth refreshing these keys because not only are you getting exp from it but you're also going to be pushing up your orb count so this guy over here uh, what are they called the chronospace essence so for example if you win against this guy you get 15 of the chronospace essences and then to recharge these keys it costs like five and then eight and then ten so as you can see if you can just even beat the advanced one you will break even at least on the very last key and on top of that don't forget to go over to the reward track over here so as you can see we do get a couple of srs for free but not only that we're also getting the blue essence as well and so like there is some level of recouping your losses well not your losses your expenditures all right and so that's it for the pvp aspect i think it might be time to start looking at doing a pvp guide let me know if you guys would like that but with that being said let's head on over to tip four which is about stamina again because we love our stamina and so you guys can see that there is an assortment of different ways of refilling your stamina we've got the stamina flask which gives you stamina equal to half of your maximum stamina and then the stamina elixir which gives you the full amount of your maximum stamina. Now for the tip itself, tip number four, you want to be using your stamina flasks before you use your stamina elixir. And the reason is because if you use the stamina flask and then you spend that stamina and that stamina was enough to push you to the next level, that next level is going to increase your stamina cap over here. And so what that means is that your stamina elixir is going to be worth more. Well, it will restore more at the next level. And so guys, likewise, before you even like consider using any of these pots, make sure that you have spent all of your stamina and you are as close as you can be. All right, and so let's get into tip number five. So it's gonna be in the shop. It's about those gold feathers again. And so this is gonna be a pretty interesting one. So as you can see, the soul cryolites, your rolls, we can get five of them per month. And so each one costs 100 of the white, sorry, it's the white petals. I keep calling them feathers. So again, each one of the soul cryolites here costs 100 of the white petals. If you guys are after soul cryolites, I'm gonna to, like show you guys head on over to the golden petal and what you're going to see is that the soul cryolites over here in which you can redeem 20 a month these ones only cost five of the golden petals and so if i come over to the white petal you will see that i'm able to redeem four golden petals for the price of 40 of the white petals and so what that means is that to get five golden petals to get one of the soul cryolites as you can see over here it only costs you 50 white petals and so if you guys are looking to get the soul cryolites i would highly recommend 
recommend transferring or converting your uh, the white petals over to the golden petals and then buying it from this shop over here. Getting the soul cryolites this way is essentially half the cost when compared to the white petal method. All right, guys. And so let's move on to tip number six is, well, what are the priorities in terms of progressions for each of the units? So should you prioritize like your levels? Should you prioritize your ascension, skills, equipment, stuff like that? So this is what we think. The first one, the most important one, is probably going to be your ascensions as well as your levels. Because in a nutshell, without your levels, you can't go ascending. And you guys already saw how much of a massive stack gain these ascensions are. And so the priority after that would actually be this guy over here. So if you guys didn't know, every character has a passive skill. And so this passive skill is unlocked via the skill tree. So if I just click into here, you'll see this guy here. And so for Tornel, she generates one chaos energy every four seconds. Like, just, just think about that. It's just think about how cracked that is. And then there is actually opportunity to level it up even further. So coming down here, one chaos energy every two seconds, like, Oh my god. And so I would say that these passive skills, the unlock of the passive skills is probably your second priority after ascensions. Because without ascensions, you actually cannot get access to them. Alright, and so after that, I would say the next priority would be your gears. Because if I click into one of these gears, and then I click forge, actually, I don't know if I can, oh, I can ascend. But look at that, guys. Look at that massive, massive gain. Magic defense and HP, that's just because it's this piece over here. But it's gaining 26% of its stats, which is really freaking good. I wish I could preview it, but it's not letting me. And so guys, if you are hard stuck, consider leveling up and ascending your equipment. But otherwise, after your gears are said and done, there is only one thing left to do, and that is to go through the rest of your skills. So it's just going to be like leveling these guys over here. And unfortunately, they're just not going to be like overly impactful. So as you can see, like 40 to 45%, we're going from like 32 to 36. It is quite good. It is scaling. However, like the raw stats that you're getting from the gears just like makes it a higher priority. All right. And so with that being said, let's move on to tip number seven. So my guys, I don't have any stamina on me right now, but essentially what I do want to say is that there is no time limit for finishing your stage or your battles. So for example, this one over here, I believe, I think it's 3-7. Yup, this, this MF, holy moly, white bear, Hervorolta. This guy, oh my God, he made me mold so hard. Like it took me probably like probably eight attempts to actually beat him. And so how I ended up beating him and honestly how I end up beating everything else because I was like lacking in mage. Ages. My team composition consists of a tank, a healer, and the witch. And so these three characters over here, they essentially form up my team and the team that I use to cheese pretty much every single piece of content. And I say cheese, but really it's playing the game in hard mode because, because I don't have the pillow and I don't have like a really strong mage. I'm missing both Maya and Ashpia, although I reckon Lilia might be able to substitute. But yeah, so what I have been doing is essentially stall the heck out of the opponent. For my Tornel, I set up for her skill, this guy over here. So we just keep shielding and getting heals. And then on the other hand, we come over to my tank and we use her AOE skill, which does magic defense shred. On top of that, it also dispels the enemy's buffs, but also does decent amount of damage to all enemies. So it's an AOE attack. And then lastly, I have the witch because I am using this skill over here. Bloom. Now this guy is pretty cool. Unleashes Asherah's power, increasing damage dealt by all allies by 15%, but also healing all allies for 51% of the witch's attack. And so you guys can already see where this is going, right? We're tanking and we're healing and we're tanking and then we're healing and then we're relying on our freaking auto attacks as well as the tanks, uh, the skill two. This guy over here to eventually chip down the boss and take them out by stalling them out. This, my guys, is most certainly not the right way to play. It is it's actually excruciating how painful this is. Like, I'm pretty sure it took me like six or seven minutes to be able to take down that freaking bear. And so I wouldn't recommend this method unless you guys are desperate, like, like I am the entire freaking game. And so that was quite a long-winded way of saying there is no timer. You can take your time to uh, cheese it how you want to. All right, and so we got tip number nine, and that is that the witch can actually change the skill. So you see this button over here with the text coming out of the box. If you click this button, you will see that we can actually switch skills. So we started off with the Chrono Space Gate, and now I've selected Bloom. And I believe every time we complete a world, we will be getting a new skill. And so honestly, this functionality is kind of like a little bit hidden away. And so that is why this is a tip. All right, guys, tip number nine. And unfortunately, I don't have any stamina to show you guys, but all I need to say is that when you guys are in story mode, when you are walking around in the chapters, you can actually click on your mini map to expand the map. 
Wow. I know guys, it sounds absolutely insane, absolutely crazy, but I personally only learnt about that on the very, very last day of CBT. And so you guys can pop open the map to see where you haven't explored yet in case you've missed any of the chests and you're still looking for it. Just click it. Just click the mini map and then a big map will come out. It's it's pretty... <laughs> oh my god, how did I not notice it? Alright, and so with that being said, let's move on to tip number 10, which is to try to be as least overleveled as you can be. And the reason is that if you are overleveling, it means that you're spending a lot of stamina into like the less efficient mana stages. However, if you truly cannot push the story or if you can't like push content, then, then by all means go into the mana stages. Me personally, I've dumped so much stamina into both the Dream of a Dean 5, 4, 3, but I always try to keep it as close to the recommended as possible just so that I don't have to spend extra stamina on it. And so the reason that I'm recommending this is because you want to, again, spend all of your stamina when you unlock mana 6. And so if you can get away with progressing through the game with as little resources as possible, I would highly, highly recommend doing that. So that when you inevitably get your witch to level 20, you can just dump all your stamina into here and everyone can get the fat, fat juice. All right, my guys. And so that brings us to the very last tip. I think it's tip 11, probably. And so I'm gonna head over to the shop. I'm gonna go into supplies. Yep. And then the friendship point shop. And so I'm pretty sure I spoke about this one in the last video. However, there is something that's pretty neat here. After you're done with this shop, whether it be clearing out all of the discounted objects or whatever, you can actually reset the stock down here. And I know it says minus 40 points. And like, honestly, that's not really worth it. But I think the first time every day that you attempt to reset the shop, it costs nothing. And so for me before, chances left was actually four and the decrease was zero. And so yeah, what you can do is just clear out all the discounted ones and then reset it once and then clear it out again. As for whether resetting the shop over here is worth it or not, I still don't know yet. But otherwise, this one is pretty neat. There's always a lot of stuff in discount. Like I know I need a lot of these guys because I have not like kept up with my equipment. But my dudes, with that tip, I believe that brings us to the end of the video. And so honestly, at this point in time, I don't have anything left to share. Share. And so this is the part where I palm off my responsibilities to you guys. It's your turn, my guys. It's your turn to give me the tip. And so if you guys have any tips or any like mistakes to avoid, let us know down in the comments below. And I would really appreciate that because it means that you've actually made it up until the end of the video. And so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, if you don't have any tips to share, either let me know which one was your favorite or just, just thank me. Thank Papa Lace. All right, and so as always, if this video has helped you, please consider a like. And if you have not subbed yet, then go ahead and do so down below. But otherwise, as this mother effing bear once said, all good things must come to an end. And so that's why he was freaking rampaging everywhere. And so thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.